What is up, guys? Welcome back to the freaking channel, Walking on Water. It is March, springtime, 2023, and we are kicking off a series about spring freaking Chinook. It's Chinook season, spring Chinook season. The Cromers are starting to hit the freaking river, and the fish are moving up in the water systems in your local landlocked Chinook lakes. My local lake is Lake Coeur d'Alene up here out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and we are going to talk about how to catch landlocked Chinook salmon up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Let's get into it. All right, guys, first thing is first, before you even step foot in your boat, before you even get out on the water, we need to know where these Chinook salmon are hanging out in the water system, okay? Are they down deep? Are they in the thermocline mid-level? Are they up higher in the water system? So during the springtime, a lot of the bait transitions as the lake starts to turn over from deeper in the water where it's the earth's core is heating the water that's pretty deep that's why these fish in the winter time like to hang out super deep okay now in the springtime as things start to warm up the water starts to warm up this bait starts moving around it starts traveling towards the surface of the water that's where we're going to locate these landlocked chinook salmon on lake coeur you don't want to be fishing super deep Anywhere from about one foot all the way down to about 30 feet deep is where you're gonna find these big spring king salmon. So when you go out on the lake, you, you're gonna know right offhand that these fish are up towards the surface feeding. They're from anywhere from the surface level down to about 30 feet. I would realistically not fish the first 10 feet of the water system. I would fish more of the 15 to 30 foot range if you ask me. That's where I've got linked up a ton on these Chinook salmon up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene. So in my opinion, anywhere from 15 to 30 feet is gonna be the honey hole zone where you wanna be running your guys' gear. So let's go over some of the things and the techniques that we're gonna to use to go out there and bonk these fish from anywhere from 15 down to about 30 feet deep during the springtime up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Okay, now that we've got the water depth dialed in for these landlocked Chinook salmon up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene, let's talk about the number one setup. In my opinion, I would run this on every single rod that you have and you can run different variations of this on rods um, with or without dodgers, with or without flashers, but the helmeted herring setup or a bait threaded herring setup, one that's spinning in the water is gonna be the setup that you're gonna wanna run. We're not gonna talk about bait threaded herring today. I just wanted to add that in there. We are gonna talk primarily on the helmeted herring setup that I have right here in front of us today. We're gonna start with the two hooks down at the bottom. I like to leave about a four inch gap between each hook because you're talking about a herring here that we're gonna rig up in just one second so you can see it firsthand. But this is a non-slip mooching rig. You have two hooks tied together that are not sliding. It is a non-slip mooching rig. If you wanna learn how to tie up this mooching rig, go over to my channel, Walking on Water, look up how to tie a non-slip mooching rig and you will find this exact knot tie on the channel. So go over, like it, Take a watch, learn how to tie this up for yourself. You can buy them pre-tied. The hooks generally on the pre-tied setups are not the best of quality. Some of the tips get dull really fast. So I like to change out every single hook that I use, but that is a personal preference. You do not have to do so. But if you wanna learn how to tie that up, go check that out. Then we're gonna get down to the business end of this setup, okay? We have our helmet, just like so. You can pick them up um, at Cabela's online, Black Sheep, um, any sporting goods store, a lot of them, I mean, a lot of them don't carry them, but a lot of them do carry them. It is a primary way of fishing up here. And a lot of people don't like to bait thread the herring, which I am gonna put a lot of the bait threaded herring to the test this year, but I'm gonna run helmeted herring to start the year on every single rod that I have. And this is how we are gonna go ahead and thread this helmet. All right, guys, as you can see, there is a hole right down here for your line to go in so you can thread this helmet, okay? now. I don't thread it directly through this hole and straight out this end hole right here on the end. There's a little end hole right there. I like to thread it through the hole, okay? And then I'm gonna go over to this side where these two holes are and I'm gonna thread it through the top hole first and then down and around through the bottom hole and then out the main tip hole where your line's gonna be straight through it at the end. And that's gonna provide resistance against the line so I can slide this forward and backwards to get that perfect spin, that perfect roll on the herring in the water. Otherwise, the water pressure, like I said earlier, will push against this and it'll bunch that herring up 
and you don't want a bunched up herring because you don't want a super, super tight, fast spin. This is not a cut plug style herring setup. This is a helmeted herring and we're fishing for springers who like that slow, nice, consistent roll of a dying bait fish. So let's rig this up really fast and we will move on to the flashers and dodgers. Okay, so again, we're gonna put our line down through the line hole. It's pretty obvious to see once you grab one of these helmets, it's really easy, okay? Then we're gonna pull a nice tag piece, okay? Just pull a nice tag piece, you're gonna push it through, it's gonna bounce back out, and you're gonna grab the tag, okay? We're gonna slide it down through the actual main hole. So this is how a lot of people just set them up, okay? Like that, so you have it all the way threaded through. There's no resistance here. It's just pulling really easily through, okay? But, so how I do it is, the line is currently through the main hole like this, okay? I'm gonna run the line right back through the main hole to the other side, okay? Through the top hole of that other side. So we'll put it the right way so you guys can see it properly, okay? So it's through the top hole, the second hole right here, and I'm gonna pull it tight, okay? And that's gonna remove the line from that first hole that we put it through, okay? So then, you see the bottom hole right here, closer to the tip. We're just gonna put the line back through there, okay? Just like so. And then, I know it seems like a lot of steps, but it really is super easy once you get your hands on it. And then we're just gonna go right out the main hole, just like so, right out the main hole. Now, instead of sliding up the line freely, now the line is bound through two holes and then out the front hole, okay? That is providing resistance. I'm pulling pretty hard on this and it's not really wanting to move, okay? Now, can the water resistance still bend the herring? Yes, it can. Is it gonna do it easier than it would before? Absolutely not. There's a lot more res resistance on this helmet and that is gonna help us keep that herring spinning nicely as we travel through the water. <sighs> now, this herring is spinning and spinning and spinning when you're trolling on Lake Coeur d'Alene, okay? So it's spinning all day. A simple, a simple swivel method could work. It'll work fine. It'll work just fine. But I like to attach a swivel to a bead chain just like so. This is a freaking six ball bead chain with a snap swivel attached to it. Super easy to do. Um, you can just run the regular swivel, it's not a big deal. I just personally like to run the bead chain. It just prevents this mono um, from freaking getting all bunched up in the water and getting all spun out, okay? So we're just gonna do a standard fisherman's knot, just like so, eight wraps, put it back to the loop, and then put it through the big loop just like so, pull it, okay? Wet it, always wet your knot, and then suck it down tight, okay? So now, we have a 34 inch leader with a helmeted herring up to our bead chain, and then up to our snap swivel that we are going to attach to our flasher or dodgers. Let's talk about the flashers and dodgers that we use up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene so you guys can see um, every variation of things that do work and what I have caught fish on up here um, in the springtime. And so you can see what you guys wanna use or what maybe works for you. So this is a kokanee size Shasta blade dodger. This is one of the first dodgers that I use to catch a spring chinook up here. And that, that morning I caught two in like a matter of an hour. Um, and it was about nine-ish o'clock and I was fishing my spot and I got linked up on one of these little Shasta blade dodgers just like so. Um, the dodger provides a nice motion in the water. It, it travels back and forth like this, you know. I like to have a little bit of a bend in my dodger like that so it's a nice wide thump, so it's thumping. But the dodger um, provides a little bit of motion um, to the hel helmeted herring like this. So you could run a little bit longer leader if you do have this because the herring is spinning. You do not need up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene in the springtime, we're talking springtime here in the summer is a totally different story, but in the springtime you don't need your dodger or flasher or you don't even need a dodger or flasher. Some people run this behind or on a downrigger or an inline weight, just the helmeted herring 
without a dodger or flasher in front of them and those catch fish too. But on the dodger and flasher aspect, uh, this little dodger will work great. I also have a green variation of the same thing that has also caught me spring chinook up here. But these triangle flashers, just like this, have caught me more spring chinook up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene than any other dodger, flasher, non-dodger. I've put these to the test many of years now and these have always come out on top on how many fish I'm catching on Lake Coeur d'Alene during the springtime. I'm actually, I picked up this Yakima one. I've been running the shore bus one for a couple years. It's had in, like just tons of success on this flasher. It provides um, zero motion to the bait itself. You just hook it to your main line like so and you swivel it just like this. Pop that on there, we're gonna lock it in, okay? And then you have your setup just like this, okay? Down to your helmet, okay? This is just gonna spin in the water as you're traveling through. You could run a 30 to about a 38 inch uh, liter on these, uh, these triangle flashers just like this and you'll be just fine, okay? So the short bus or the Yakima flasher, um, these are gonna be your go-tos. If I had to suggest one to you, I mean, I would honestly suggest the triangle over the Dodger, but if you're running multiple rods, say you're on a big boat, you're running planer boards, you got a few people on the boat, everybody's got a two pole permit, and you're running multiple rods, a Dodger, some, tri uh, some triangle flashers, and then maybe even no flasher on some, and that's gonna give you the best possible spread for Lake Coeur d'Alene in the springtime. But if you're just running two rods, you're in a smaller boat, it's just you out there, and then you wanna have some versatility, then I would run a triangle, I would try a dodger, and whenever you get linked up, if you like the way that's feeling, you're feeling really confident about it, maybe go ahead and throw on a second triangle, maybe the dodger gets hit. You know what I mean? Maybe in the afternoon the flasher's getting hit and in the morning the dodger was getting hit. Maybe none of them are getting hit and you need to take the flasher off all the same. The biggest thing about fishing and spring Chinook fishing is if you're not catching fish and you've been fishing for a few days, so there's good days and bad days, of course, but if you're not catching fish, you see other people catching fish, then maybe you need to change up or, or change one small, small variable that's gonna help you get on the fish, whether it's depth, whether it's the type of flashers you're using, whether it's gloves, because you should always wear gloves and not touch any of your baits whatsoever because fish have amazing sense of smell. And so we're gonna go in to the herring side of this. We're gonna rig up a herring for you guys. And then we're gonna talk about the whole setup as a whole. So you guys understand how to catch these big spring Chinook on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Now, we have our helmeted herring. We have our helmeted herring setup. You also need a little red pin just like this. When you buy a pack of these helmets, they usually come with pins. Always check, a toothpick will work good too. I like having the pin, it's easy the pin, it's easier for me to grab when I'm wearing the gloves and it just stays in. It's got the, the little bald head like that. You can even put your line through it so it can stay attached to your main line. So it just is always there. But I have a little bucket full of these pins. They're just really nice to have. Again, if you don't have the pins, you accidentally buy them, you're ready to go fish and you forget, a toothpick will work just fine, okay? So how I set up my herring I always brine my herring and it's not just for the scent and the color and the smells that it puts off. Those are huge added bonuses, but I brine my herring because it firms up that herring, that bait, so it can fish in the water a lot longer. If you take out a soft herring, it's gonna run in the water for about 30 to 40 minutes and it's gonna be toast. These herring will literally run for literally one to two, maybe even three hours if they don't get bit up. Um, it's just, it just changes the game and how much bait you need and just the whole process of getting out on the water, right? So, and I love, I love fire brine. I love pro cure brines too. I'm, I'm not partial to any one brand. Um, I do like running the reds and greens in the springtime over the blue. And even on occasion, they have a clear one that does work really well as well. But these are really mainly for me and my, and my fishing experiences, yes, the color definitely helps. And sometimes I've only caught fish on red and sometimes I've only caught fish on green. And a, a green is a great springtime color as well. You can't ever forget green. That's why I run these green helmets. They're huge. Um, but this just will toughen up your bait. Also, 
Epsom salt is the best. Um, I ran out, but I used pink Himalayan salt to cure up these. This salt will literally add to this and help tighten up that bait even more so you have a nice stiff bait. Because again, when you're running a herring, let's look at a herring. Okay, you see how this herring right here is all shriveled up? Look at it, it's stiff. It's not bending over and falling. It's bending a little bit because it's been out of the refrigerator, but that's perfectly fine. But as you can see, all these scales are nice and tight and there's a nice sheen and a nice shine. The color's bright, it smells good. The, the salt mixture and the brine mixture, without the salt, it will not be um, held together so well. This has a little bit of salt in it and it does help tighten up the bait, but the salt definitely helps tighten up that bait. Look, I'm pinching it. There's not much bend. It's not squishy. It's hard. It's firm. And that's what you want because when we're fishing these herring on these helmets, you want a nice slight bend in it, just like so, so it's spinning in the water perfectly. You don't want to, you don't want a really fast spin. You want a nice consistent motion of a spin as you're fishing these herring. Let's set this up on the helmet right now. Okay. How we're gonna do it is we're gonna grab the helmet with our fingers just like so. You wanna put the bottom of the fish, okay? The bottom of the fish's mouth is gonna go where the line hole is on this helmet. Can you see the line hole right here? You're gonna shove the he head of the herring into that just like so. That will line up this big hole right here with its eyeball. You're gonna grab your pin, okay? And you're gonna go straight through it. And then you're gonna grab it and you're gonna find the hole on the other side. Now, that's also why I run my line through those holes is because when I pin this through, it's gonna pinch that line. And that's gonna provide even more resistance on this herring, okay? Then, we're gonna pull out a little bit of line and you see the dorsal fin right here on this herring. I like to go right above that dorsal fin. So like right where my finger is here, I'm gonna put it directly through the upper middle of the back of this fish, okay? See where the hook comes out? Right there. See how it's the upper back? I'm not going deep through the belly down here. I'm going through the upper back. The firm part of this fish, turn it sideways. Then we're gonna pull our line tight, just like that. And as you can see, that four inch, that four inch tag on this hook is gonna put that hook right above the end of the tail. So when this thing is spinning in the water, that hook is right here always for when that fish comes up and bites it and takes a rip at it, okay? So then we're gonna grab our line and we're gonna pull just like that, okay? We're gonna pull till the hook is at the line hole. The, eye, the eyelet of the hook is right here at the line hole. We're just gonna grab our thumb and push the herring down a little bit. And as you can see, there's a nice little bend right there in the herring, okay? And that bend is gonna provide that nice slow roll through the water, okay? Just like so. That hook floating right behind as it's spinning through the water. And this is how we bonk these giant spring Chinook up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Let's go through it as a whole really fast. Again, my go-to flashers are these triangle flashers like this, okay? Grab your swivel, hook it up. Just like so. We have our triangle. We have a 34 to 38 inch leader just like this down to our helmeted herring that we just rigged up. And again, when you're putting this in the water and you're traveling at speeds of 1.5 to two miles an hour, honestly, I would never set a specific speed, okay? When you see that, when you're, when you set this herring in the water and you see the herring itself, not the flasher, just the herring, I base nothing off speed, it's purely on how the herring looks in the water, okay? If this herring is doing a nice consistent a nice consistent spin, okay? Not this, a nice consistent spin in the water. That's exactly how you know you're going fast enough and that's gonna dial you into these fish. You don't want a super fast spin. This is not river fishing. We're not using cut plug herring and we're not fishing on the Columbia. We're up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene and this method 
is exactly how you want to fish for these big old spring Chinook up here on Lake Coeur d'Alene. Thank you guys so freaking much for tuning into this episode of Walking on Water. It's the first video I've made in 2023. The snow is freaking melted. I'm about to get into a new kayak little type boat. It's gonna be sick, a little 2.5 horse motor on it. It's just a little guy. I like running uh, little boats like that, super fun. And it just makes the fishing experience so much greater, especially when you're landing Chinook, going down to the Columbia, doing the freaking summer Chinook runs and stuff like that. It's gonna be so fun this year. We're gonna do tons of giveaways. Like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and let us know what you want to have given away on the channel and we will try to make that happen for you guys again thank you guys so much for tuning in to walking on water i'm cole walker freaking hope you guys have a great 2023